Another digital citizen. Another digital citizen. Another digital citizen. Another digital citizen. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of another digital citizen. I'm I'm in very good mood because we definitely did not record this out of order. <laughs> Is that why? Hi, bro. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Luke. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's Luke. Uh, we totally didn't record things out of order this week. So, if you if you hear a segment later that you think, hmm. Isn't their voice a little different there? That's why. Okay. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. How's your week been? Uh, not great. Oh, it was all right up until like the last two days. I put my back out, and so I just the last two days Ooh. I was just sitting in a chair watching TV, which sounds great, except that I was like, like a uh, ice heat, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, right. The whole time while I'm watching TV, which isn't too bad, but my back was so out. Right. It was like a giant bump, like on my spine. It was so out. It was bad. Yeah, the audience have to remember that Luke is 72 years old. So it's so funny because I think it wasn't like one thing that did it. I was doing. I did a bunch of heavy lifting over like the last two weeks, and then I was in the shower, yeah. and I went to like uh, get the shampoo off my head. And my hands going up across my head, that's what made my back go completely out. So, yes, I am, like, wow. 100 years old. <laughs> yeah. Time to get a uh, cold uh, retirement home look and get them to get you a place. I guess so, yeah. Mm. Do you have those things in in, in America that uh, are... Because in Norway, you have two different kinds. You have kind of a uh, uh, government run and then you have like you 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 can buy yourself into a place almost do you have anything that's a uh, government run in america i honestly don't know probably not my guess is they're all private no. i'm going to guess that as well i could be uh, wrong. What has my week been like uh, i'm i feel like i'm finally fro again this week, uh, because I watched a lot of TV and movies and things like that. I just feel like, yeah, maybe I needed a little, like, push in the back, because if you listen to last week's episode, I felt kind of depressed. And, uh, yeah, I haven't felt depressed this week. I felt more irritated, but that's not a topic. But, uh, you yeah, know, I, I feel like old fro again. Good. That's yeah. always good. Uh, yeah, I mean, this week went by really fast. I don't know, probably because I yes. was just busy and everything. A lot of news yeah, happening nice. this week, uh, including some Ghislaine Maxwell news. Uh, the story yeah. we've been following and following and following, it seems like. I I have a theory that she probably will win uh, the memorial... Uh, uh, tournament that we are going to have uh, in January. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. There's been a lot of different things, hasn't there, though? Like, I mean, some of the... Uh, She's up there. Yeah, the some of the sc scams <laughs> as far as, like, fake COVID stuff, that could be in the, that uh, oh, bracket definitely. as well. But it says here, Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, extremely personal documents to be unsealed. An extensive collect a collection of extremely personal documents in civil litigation against Ghislaine Maxwell be oh, can be unsealed by a Manhattan federal judge on Thursday, so tomorrow, Fro. The documents related to Maxwell's deposition in this litigation, as well as early 2015 correspondence with her and Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, Maxwell was arrested earlier this month on charges of involvement with Epstein, right. I was thinking of a very funny joke because <laughs> you know what you, you told me before before we were recording this segment that uh, Joe Biden was uh, going to tell us 
who his VP is next week, right? Vice President? That's what he said. He, Vice Pre- he said it in the first week of August, so most more than likely, yes. How funny would it be if he picked Jacqueline Maxwell? As his VP? Yes. <laughs> At the rate that Trump's going, he might still win, to be honest. It says here... <laughs> The Manhattan oh, federal God. judge uh, ruled that the, on Thursday they could release the documents, though Maxwell's attorneys are planning to appeal the decision. So it could happen tomorrow, it could not, but um, I'm thinking it might happen. And if that does happen, these documents could have some big names in them that could reveal other you know, celebrities, politicians, uh, rich rich other social uh, socialite people. Uh, being involved with Epstein and Maxwell, and if that's the case, we could have some very interesting news next week. Yeah, I really, really hope that we will get to know some juicy, juicy stuff, because, like we have said before, uh, Jess, uh, I really don't want to have... uh, uh, Jeff Stein's uh, fake death uh, to Wayne, so let's hope. Um, look, we are going to talk about uh, aliens a little later. Uh, for the audience, we're going to have an interview where we talk about aliens on Earth. Um, the Pentagon uh, have, will make some findings now public. Maybe this will support our uh, big star or later uh, the u.s government's search for ufos is ongoing and part of a program called uh uaptf that operates under the u.s naval intelligence uh, this agency appears to have assumed responsibility of another ufo hunting program uh that the pentagon purportedly disbanded in 2012 but it it's possible that they didn't it just moved right. over to this other task force. Something else. Right, exactly. Yeah. Finding, uh, findings from the UAPTF could be made public within six months, the New York Times reports. While the results mm. of the investigations are classified, uh, f- at least for now, a briefing delivered by the Defense Department representatives in March by former consultant of a UFO program mentions, uh, the, retrieve- mentions the retrieval from off-world vehicles not made of this Earth is in the reports mm. from. Despite this claim, any evidence of alleged extraterrestrial technology has been has yet to be produced. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I, um, I think uh, this is maybe one of the most interesting things uh, coming out in the UFO things that we have covered in uh, quite a while, to be honest. I mean, this is all going off of those videos that were released yeah. by the guy from Blink-182, <laughs> right? right. It's the, the, I still have to go back to how hilarious that is. That the ba- yes. I think the bass player for Blink-182 bass player, yeah. is the guy who got the government to reveal uh, that the, there's possibly aliens. It does say here, uh, the primary goal for the military agency investigating UFOs is not to find intelligent aliens, but to determine whether or not these mysterious objects pose any threat to national security. So, right. they're not this they're not actually looking for aliens. They're just worried, oh, what if this is, I don't know, Iran and they they have some kind of alien spacecraft. They I think they're more worried about that. Uh one of the aliens that uh, has uh, taken over government is uh, in the UK. <laughs> See what I did there? Mhm. Uh mm-hmm. uh because labor uh uh, we talked about this uh, some some weeks ago. I would no months ago that there was this anti-Semitism case going out in labor, and uh, they were warned uh, about that uh, in a report. And that report was deliberately misleading. It says labor's most senior. A lawyer under Jeremy Corbyn formally warned the party that the 
internal report on anti-Semitism was deliberately misleading and relied upon improperly obtained private correspondence documents show. Wow. The Labor Director of Governance and Legal until last month, Thomas Gar Gardiner, wrote that in a report that the report should not be circulated because the party's employees' emails and WhatsApp messages had been presented selectively and without true context in order to give a misleading picture of what was happening. The report, mm. which was leaked to the media, was compiled and submitted to, oh, inquire, to an inquiry by the Equal Equalities and Human Rights Commission into Labor's handling of anti-Semitism complaints. And this was all happening when the election was happening. Right, I remember that. One of the reasons why they lost uh, the election, if you ask me. And it was, this report came from Labor. So seemingly yeah. Labor, on purpose, shot themselves, shot themselves yeah, in, in the, the foot. foot because yep. there's two, I, I would assume that there's the left-left part of labor which is like the corbin side and right. then there's a more centrist right hand side of labor right and the, those people are the ones that didn't like the left hand side so they did this on purpose so that yep. their own party would lose but they didn't care if they lose as long as corbin didn't win i think is the point that of what happened here but did you remember not long time ago we had the same fucking situation in norway with uh, uh, the party that went out of the government there, they also did this, exactly the same thing. So it's really? so it, yeah, yeah. With the Film Scripts Party, we talked about it on 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 here. How they uh, went out of the government because of a uh, bagatelle. Uh, it was nothing. This. Uh, this uh, woman that was sent back from Iran and and they wanted to take the scent from it and then it hit them in the face and it's totally the same. I think it's just all over the world. I'm reading here in Jacobin. Uh, in recent years, controversy over anti-Semitism has dodged progressive leaders around the world from Jean-Luc Mélenchon to Bernie Sanders. Remember when they tried to say right. Bernie Sanders was anti-Semitic, the Jewish guy? I do remember <laughs> that, yeah. And none more so, perhaps, than the former leader of the British party, Jeremy Corbyn. After Jeremy Corbyn achieved the biggest increase in the popular vote since 1954, Labour's anti-Semitic anti-Semitism crisis became sustained feature in the UK politics. Right. So that's what this was all uh, about, was just smearing Jeremy Corbyn. None of it was really right. ever all that real. And now the people... The Labour Party, for some reason, decided to apologize to the people who wrote this terrible report, and yep. Jer and they're, now they're, because they got apologized to, are now suing the Labour Party, and the Labour Party yep. is, like, losing tons of money, and now they're blaming it on Jeremy Corbyn again. And it's like, this circular bullshit logic that <laughs> you did this thing that ruined everything, and now you're blaming the guy who you tried to ruin in the first place? Uh, it's This makes me mad, and it's not isolated, like you said, to just the UK. It's happened here, it's happened there, it's happening all over the place. The circle of tech news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, somebody doesn't need to shoot themselves in the foot. They even use a missile. Iran missile target fake carrier as the US bases go on alert. This is maybe very funny very dangerous and then very funny again. I think it's terrifying. Uh, Iran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard launched missiles Tuesday targeting a mock aircraft in the Straits of Hormuz, uh, a drill that included such barrage of, of fire, the U.S. military temporarily put two of its regional bases in the Mideast on alert. Uh, the drill and... It, Ameri and the American response to it underlined the lingering threat of military conflict between Iran and the U.S. after yes. a series of escalating incidents last year that led to an American drone strike killing a top uh, Iranian general. Tehran responded mm -hmm. to that strike by firing ballistic missiles at dozens of American forces in Iraq. Uh, while the coronavirus pand pandemic has engulfed both Iran and U.S. for months, there has still been a growing confrontation between the two sides. 
Yeah, this is absolutely what the world needs. It's a war on top of this corona shit. I mean... Uh, and everything else that's going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it, I, I, can't, I can't think of a worse timing than this. I, Can you? I, uh, no, not really. I just... I, I understand... I mean, Iran is kind of doing this almost to just say, hey, America, look what we have. We could do this to one right. of your boats or whatever. Um... So, Iran is really the aggressor here. Uh, right. And that's kind of scary because they've, all, in the past, always been more of, like, the defend, on the defensive. Like, we attacked them, and then right. they attacked us in the whole killing of Soleimani thing. Where this, they're kind of being the aggressor, saying, hey, uh, look at what we can do kind of thing. Um, do you know what this, this is? This is, I have a bigger penis competition. That is what this is. It's I mean, like, they they did obviously make this aircraft carrier specifically to look like an right. Amer- American aircraft carrier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, look at what we have. We have this huge dong here. Now, what are you going to do? It's totally what they're doing. And it's not it's not even them. It's like it is, it is so it is so incredibly dangerous what they're going on, and it's in the middle of this corona shit time as well. I mean, even though Russia said they have a, a cure for coronavirus and have started vaccines, and then the head of the China CDC gets <laughs> injected with an experimental vaccine. I mean, there are things that's going on in the corona times as well, so... It says here, the head of the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention says he's been injected with an experimental vi- vaccine. I'm going to reveal something undercover. I'm injected with one of the vaccines. One of the vaccines, he says, from. Mm. Gao Fu wow. said Sunday during a webinar hosted by Alibaba Health, according to the Associated Press, around 150 vaccines are under development worldwide, but only a handful are in progress... Uh, pro- or, or, or have progressed to phase three trials or the last stage of clinical tests before the vaccine is approved and given to the public. Uh, okay. Uh, Gaio did not say which vaccine he had been injected with, saying he did not want to be accused of doing some kind of propaganda for a particular company or drug, the AP reported. Right. But uh, all, all they can do is uh, now get the lasset to do it, so that will be nice, because... Guess what? Trained dogs are able to sniff out COVID-19 infections with a 94% accuracy, says the study. Uh, Dogs have uh, smell uh, respirators up to 10,000 times more powerful than uh, uh, and accurate than humans. This allows certain trained dogs to sniff out diseases like cancer, malaria, and viral infections. Now, according to German researchers, trained dogs can sniff out coronavirus infections. A new study that was piloted by the University of Veterinary Medicine in Hanover, the Hanover Medical School and German Armed Forces, found that if properly trained, Dogs were able to discriminate uh, between human saliva uh, samples infected with SARS-CoV-2 uh, and non-infected samples with a 90% accuracy rate. That is amazingly high. I just think dogs are pretty fucking amazing. I, the fact that that dog like can dog. smell diseases, right? Yeah. Lassie, you go... Don't, don't, don't give two shits about uh, Timmy that is in, in the well. He can stay in the well. Go out and <laughs> That was the episode. That was every episode of Lassie, by the way. <laughs> Go out and sniff coronavirus instead. Wasn't that every episode of Lassie? I've like... never seen Lassie. You've never seen Lassie? No, I'm too, I think I'm just slightly too young for that. I, was it a TV uh... show? I thought it was a movie. 
No, it was a TV show okay. as well. No, I didn't know. Yeah, and and Timmy, Timmy was one of the children, and he was always in trouble. And Lassie comes and barks at the family, and the family goes like, "Oh, what do you say, Lassie? Is Timmy stuck in a well?" And I, I go always was like laughing because how the fuck do they know what the dog is barking about? <laughs> right, I do that joke. I know just from <laughs> other things it being mocked in other, you know, other right. things. <laughs> But I've yeah. never, I never watched the movie. I never seen an episode of the TV show. I didn't even know it was a TV show. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lassie would probably be good at this whole see, uh, sniffing out coronavirus thing. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Might be also that dogs are good at sniffing butts. Uh... <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be amazing. You just like. <laughs> You're at the airport and there's a dog and it's just sniffing everybody's butt before they get on the plane. Mm-hmm. I'm like, nope, no coronavirus there. Nope, nope. Last thing you ran for 19 seasons, look. Okay. Yeah. In like the 60s mm-hmm. or something, though. <laughs> like way In, before. From ni- <laughs> yes, from 1954 to 1973. That is quite a long time. I believe it, I guess. I wonder how many different lassies they had to go through, though, right? For that long? None, Luke, because lassie will never, ever die. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Shh, there's children listening to this podcast. Next thing you're going to say is that Santa isn't real. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. Uh... And children don't even know who lassie is nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Nina Turner says that uh, Trump and Biden is like having a bowl of shit in front of you. Uh, that's right. Nina Turner, our co-chair uh, for Bernie Sanders' former presidential campaign, uh, said, uh, speaking to the Atlantic, it's like saying, um, right, explaining the decision between Trump and Biden. Uh, was disappointing for some Democrats, and she said, it's like saying to somebody, you have a bowl of shit in front of you, and all you've got to do is eat half of it instead of the whole thing, Turner said. It's still shit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I just think it's cr- hilarious to hear this coming out of an, uh, a politician's mouth, but uh, the Atlantic went on to use her quote in, multi- uh, in one of multiple Trump could win re-election despite trailing in recent polls. Uh, so what do you, I mean, it, I think it's an interesting I- idea of the whole, like, uh, yes, the, the whole, this is coming back to the argument we had four years ago about, you know, the uh, lesser of two evils idea and that whole thing. And right. yes, Biden definitely in lots of different, ways is better than trump but again it's like the lesser of two evils things and she's just doing it in a much more graphic way where it's like Mm. you can eat the shit or you can eat the shit like do you want chihuahua shit or do you want uh or do you want cat shit it's still shit right it's like south park always said it's the the, uh, choice between a turd sandwich and a douche I mean, that's, this is not the same for everybody. I think this is mostly for people who are more progressive. I think people who are centrists are going, yay, Joe Biden, we're super happy for this. Uh, but right. people who aren't really ha- – who, people who want Medicare for all when we're in the middle of a pande- pandemic are feeling the same way Nina Turner is feeling, I guess. Yeah, I definitely feel like Nina Turner. I, 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 I honestly – I was thinking about it this week. Uh, about the election mm-hmm. because it's not that, not that many months to am I more sure about not voting for Biden than I was for Hillary and I came to the conclusion like for me for me they are more or less the same of the same coin they're a part of this big corporate part of the Democratic Party that I really, really dislike. And I came to the conclusion that the reason why I don't think people should vote either for Biden or for Trump has nothing to do with 
uh, nothing to do with maybe the persons, but what they represent. Represent. I think Biden represents a bigger problem in the Democratic Party than any other candidate before him has. And I'm including Hillary in that, actually. Okay. I mean... That's, that's my personal opinion. But. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a kind of a policy on policy basis as far as what yeah. who's better and who's worse, right? I like, in no way do I think Biden would have... Uh, would be sending uh, federal troops into all these cities and stuff like that. Right, right. That's true, yeah. No, I, I, I guess I, I, I can't say anything else and that I will probably say that sh- people should vote for Biden because I know what you, you have right now and what you have now is... Oh, it's so bad, look. <laughs> it is so bad. Every time I talk to people online or... Or things like that. It's like they making fun of how America is in the shit house, and I feel so bad for you guys. I really do. I wish there was a way of like saving, saving you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I really do. I, I and I also don't think that when it, it's not like going to be a, just a f- flip of a switch when Joe Biden gets in, and then no. all of a sudden America is going to be a great place. I don't know. Nope. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while if Biden really does anything at all to fix this. Like I said, he doesn't want Medicare for all. He doesn't want to legalize marijuana. He's against a lot of things that most of the country are for. Uh, mm-hmm. And so he's only going to do so much. Uh, he's not going to do as much as a lot of people want. But yeah, no, I came to the conclusion that I will, I, I will support Biden this uh, time. And okay. that has nothing to do with Biden. It has more to do with uh, Mr. Trumpelump. And talking about Mr. Trumpelump, let's uh, say him saying some stupid shit on TV. He did a press conference yesterday and he was asked about a video he posted on Twitter, uh, which included a lady, a preacher, I think, talking about... Uh, talking about hydrochloroquine and diff- and COVID-19 and talking about how vaccines are going to be used to, uh, they're, they're going to make a vaccine to stop you from being Christian. They're going to make an anti-Christian vaccine is one of the things she said. Mm-hmm. And that they also use alien DNA, uh, to make vaccines. Uh, so he gets asked about this in the press conference and let's see what happens. Give me a countdown. In uh, three, two, one, go. Here are the people. The woman that you said was a great doctor in that video that you retweeted last night said that masks don't work and there is a cure for COVID-19, both of which health experts say is not true. She's also made videos saying that doctors make medicine using DNA from aliens and that they're trying to create a vaccine to keep you immune from becoming religious. Maybe it's the same, maybe it's not, but I I can tell you this. She was on air along with many other doctors. Mm-hmm. And they were big fans of hydroxychloroquine. And I thought she was very impressive in the sense very that impressive. where she came, I don't know which country she comes from. What country she comes from? Hundreds of different patients. Who cares? And I thought her voice was an important voice, but I know nothing about her. Yeah. Last week, last week, that uh, is your Here, point. look at this. Thank you. Right, at, she's in the middle of asking him another question, and he's like, "Peace out." <laughs> he didn't. He. Did, I don't think he liked that question, bro. I think he answered that question and went, "She seemed like a pretty nice lady to me." And it's like the people who are his handlers were like, "Get him out of there right now!" <laughs> he can't be saying the lady who believes in alien DNA vaccines is like uh, perfectly fine. And this is why I sadly want to say I am so supporting Biden this time. It's like we need to get this moron out of the White House. I just think it's sad that uh, no, it's not like anybody's behind Biden and really excited no. for Biden. And it's like, oh, no. great, his policies are so great and he's going to change things and he's going to no. make things better for me. No, it's I just don't want Trump. Like you could put a... <laughs> A yep. rock in there uh, instead of Biden, and people would still vote for the rock over Trump. I don't mean mm. the rock like Dwayne Johnson. I mean an actual rock like on the ground. <laughs> yeah, a piece of loaf would be a better president than you have right now. 
Teddy Ruxpin but, uh, from the 80s, which is like a, a doll with a... Yes, I remember the bears! <laughs> with like... With, with a tape in it. And bear. That would yeah. be a better... That would probably still beat Donald Trump in this election, so... Uh, well, you will never ever learn, Luke, so it's okay. And Trump is going to tell the truth about that. This is Trump where Trump tells the truth. The humankind never learned before I get beaten a lot. But even then, people never learn. They don't learn a fucking damn shit. You in America never learned. You have tons of wars in this century, but you never learn. The Vietnam War didn't learn anything. Two Gulf War didn't learn anything either. And you failed hair care system haven't learned you a damn fucking shit. A lot of people say that's something wrong with the United States, but it's the wrong things all over the world. In Europe, the First World War was one of the worst war we had ever. Yes, we thought we were going to learn from that, but we didn't, so we had a second one. And we learned from that for a long, long while for the same forms and ideas as on the rise. Yes, they're on the rise in Russia, Poland, Hungary, even in Germany. Even in Norway and Sweden, Nazis in some places has started walking the streets. They have even killed people. So it's the right thing to tell you that Antifa is a bunch of terrorists. Well, they haven't killed any Antifa and been any violence from them at all. They have no register any murder or killing at all in over 25, 30 years, maybe longer than that. But that was not my issue on this, really. We never learn. We have a climate crisis now, and we haven't learned a damn shit from that either. We know that the forests are burning. We know that the fish in the sea are dying. We know that most of the, of the oceans are full of plastic, but we still don't learn. We have a disease going right now, and people on Facebook and social media still acting like it's a big hoax. In America, 150,000 people are dead. In Brazil, over 1,000 people die every day. Have you learned? No, we haven't. Not a fucking long shot. In Norway, we had a lot of pe- not many deaths because Norwegian authorities did something smart. Yes, a conservative government who done something smart and able to work with the people on the left and the center. So, but did we learn anything? No, we did not. When the borders opened to Sweden, people were packed cream to just go over there and buy cheap stuff. They couldn't wait to go to Spain, even though that was one of the, one of the epic centers in Europe. Now, the numbers of sick people are on the rise again. And I think it's going to come to a place where you don't have control anymore. And people are going to start dying in numbers again here in Europe, especially in Norway and Sweden. We never learn. And I don't think we're going to learn this time either. I I wish I could say something happy to make you smile and do something. But everything I do in this this segment is telling people to learn something from early mistakes. But I tell people to go and vote. That's because I've seen political history, how it goes. But I tell leftists not to be so fucking fragile and go for the second best, for the best in the long term. It's because I've seen history. I see this shit. That's what I have learned. But not even on the left, not even the right, and not even the center, we learn. Because you know, we're more uh, fed up, <laughs> bit, no, sorry people, we're too full of ourselves. We never learn. It's all about us, 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 24-7. I think the number's going to keep on rising. And I think the impact's going to be worse. I think the rates of fascism going to increase. And I think totalitarianism can be a problem. If you talked talk to me 10 years ago and said, do you think there will be a third world war? I would say no. But now I say yes. Nationalism on the rise. And people who say nationalism is good, well, they haven't learned either. This was Tron, but Tron tells the truth. And I hope you can do something rather than think about yourself and maybe do something to stop all this bullshit. Bye. Thank you, Trum. Uh, I think he has a point that uh, 
uh, if we look at history, it tends to go in circles that we never learn. I mean, it's kind of obvious. Right, or it seems like this, some people keep trying to do the same thing, and then it always fails. Yeah. I think it's a good, another yeah. good way of putting it. Um, we have a Twitter. If anybody wants to go check out our Twitter, uh, at Podcast ADC, go at us on there. Uh, we're part of the Pod All The Time Network, Pod All The Time PN, Podcast Helping Podcasts. Uh, that's at Pod All The Time PN on Twitter. Another member of our podcast network, Scarlet TPC, a true po- crime podcast with the unique voices of two ladies looking to entertain, change perspective, and share some of the craziest crimes. Also a member of the Pod All The Time Network, they're at at Scarlet Podcast. I actually listened to them two, three weeks ago. Very good podcast. Cool. Yeah. If you like true crime, uh, go check them out. Yeah, I like I like true crime. Um, I'm not a very like true crime whore or something. I, there's some people that really likes it, like to a, to a scary point of view. Like I think right I now it's friend, really popular. Is the thing like just yeah. right now specifically? I had a friend uh, 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 some time ago that was very into true crime. And she was like, she knew everything about serial killers and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, we also have another digital citizen at gmail.com. That's another digital citizen at gmail.com. That's our email address. We are on Facebook. Uh, It's another digital citizen on Facebook. Uh, uh, If you see a post uh, made by Luke uh, about the show, you can comment underneath there. And we will read it on the next show. TV round! Uh, the Emmy nominations has come out. And uh, this year, we will have a competition. I promise you that we will not forget like we did last year. <laughs> we totally forgot. Uh, but uh, I don't think we've we... ever done the Emmys. So I'm not really sure what you... Yeah, we, we were doing the Emmys, Emmys last year. But uh, the thing is, we had planned it a week later than uh, it came out. So when we were going to have the competition uh, between you and me, uh, it already had been the uh, uh, outcome of it. Okay. So, yeah. I, I don't remember this at all, but sure. Okay. But anyway, Watchdog. Uh, watch now. That's not the fucking name, bro. Watchmen. <laughs> What's Watchdog? <laughs> Watchmen leads the charge for a um, uh, nomination. Uh, this is not a very huge surprise, I guess. I didn't like it, but who am I? Uh, Watchmen cloaked superhero in mythology and grounded in uh, real-world racism uh, received a leading... 26 nominations uh, Tuesday for the Primetime uh, Emmy Awards. Uh, anything that you saw that you were a little surprised with on the list? Uh, the Morning Show got a Best Actress uh, bid. Yeah. Which the Morning Show was... I, I never saw it, but I was to understand it was terrible. Uh, the Mandalorian 15, so Apple TV, it seems like doing pretty well. Uh Amazon, the Marvel- Marvelous Miss Maisel. Can we just get a cutoff on like when you can win awards for TV shows and when you can't? Because this show has been <laughs> one yes. like for the last three years, and it's not even a great show. I know it, some people like it, but it's not that great. It's okay. It's it's totally okay. But Compared to some of the shows that have come out this year that have been fucking amazing, yeah. like. Yeah. Having uh, the morning show compared to some of the great shows that have been on in 2020 is like, I think it's a slap in the face to some of those great shows. I I agree, and uh, even QB uh, has gotten some nominations in different categories for short for short content. Right, that so, just proves to me that you can buy Emmy nominations. Is what that says. <laughs> that, that is a hundred and ten percent yes. Hey, we talked about uh, Kanye West. Uh, Kim Kardashian uh, was spotted with him. Tell me about that. When we talked last week, we were wondering what was going on and why Kim wasn't helping out with Conway and helping him, talking to him about like 
what the hell is going on. It seems like th it says here the couple reunited for the first time in recent weeks this Monday, so just a couple days ago. So I guess that's why she wasn't around is because they weren't with each other for whatever reason. I mean, they are celebrities, but uh, there's a pandemic right now. you think they'd be at their house. Uh, the pair was spotted driving together in Wyoming, a source told E! News, Fro. Face-to-face uh, -face interaction comes just two days after the rapper and presidential hopeful public publicly apologized to his wife uh, on Twitter. Um, I guess he said he wanted to get a divorce. I read another article that said uh, they've kind of been talking about getting a divorce for months now, Fro. This is not knew that they have been talking about getting a divorce and maybe that's adding to some of the stress in Kanye's life as well? Yeah, and a divorce can be kind of stressful. I have heard some rumors of <laughs> maybe, kind of. Right, so I think yeah, no. maybe all these things are coming together and causing what we're seeing with the whole, everything that's happening with Kanye. Yeah. Uh, I have watched some weird things about uh, this week because, uh, well, I will explain it a little later. Uh, let's start with something that I definitely have never talked about before because I saw it this week. Have you ever heard of a TV show on Netflix called Lan La Sorry, Last Chance You? No. So this is a, a documentary that follows this college football team that uh, aren't uh, in the major programs and don't have a lot of like national attention. Okay. And uh, and they follow them uh, through the season. I have n we we you and me talk talk about this. I have absolutely no interest in 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 American football whatsoever, right? Okay. Do you think I like this? Uh, by your tone of voice and the way you're setting this up, I would say yes. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I gave it an 8.5 for the first season. Loved it. Very good documentary. I got very mes mesmerized into it. and uh, It is five seasons, so I have a lot uh, left to see. Okay, I saw Geordie Shore, uh, season 21? <laughs> season 21 oh, oh. of this show, Fro. Oh, Luke, why? The show is still happening on the air in the UK. Um, oh, why are you watching it? What do you mean? Because it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible, it's great. Geordie Shore, season 21, episode 1. Uh, it, it's Jordy Shore. I mean, it's a lot of, like, barely anybody is still in this as far as, like, from the original cast. It's basically all new right. newbies. Um, Who's left from the original cast? I saw the original. Um, what's her name? Uh, Holly is in it occasionally in this one, at uh, least. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. She was, like, it's, kind of uh, the original original. Uh, oh, yeah, she was. Definitely. And yeah, uh, what is other than that, I'm pretty sure again? it's mostly every... I, my guess is during the season, which is what they did last season, occasionally for like one or two episodes, an old cast member will come and hang out at the house. Right. That's what they did last season as well, so... Uh, it's still Jordy Shore. I'll give it a 4.5. Cool. I saw Central P Park, so... Central this is on Park. Central Park, yes. This is a, a Apple TV exclusive cartoon series. It's not very good. I saw two episodes and I'm out. Uh, I have still not seen anything very good from Apple TV, so I'm like, did I produce anything good at all? I mean, at all? <laughs> and it was this half good uh, horror show uh, by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, the servant, but that wasn't even like fantastic, and this is like bad Simpsons uh, American Dad. It's by the same people that did Bob's Burgers, bro. It's like the oh. same art style and everything as Bob's Burgers, so that's probably why you didn't like it. <laughs> I wonder why I didn't like it then. Hmm, <laughs> what could it be? But yeah, no, I give it a three. Uh, let's move on. Uh, 
what else did I watch? I may destroy you. That is not a threat, look, but it is. <laughs> it sounds like a threat, but it is a television show. Have I you think heard I about saw it? this, right? I'm pretty sure I saw this a month ago or something when it first came out. Really? It's British, right? Yeah. The black lady. How about this? Uh, yeah, Arabella. Right. Yeah, I did see this. What, did you like it? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> because I don't think this has gotten a very high or recommended. It's like 97 on Rotten Tomatoes uh, and a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb. And to be honest, uh, it kind of disappointed me. It's supposed to be this comedy drama. I didn't find it that funny, and I didn't. It was supposed find to be a comedy. Funny. Oh my god, I didn't even yeah. know that. It's so dark. How is it a comedy? I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I thought the main actress was amazing, but the story was kind of blur. I mean, that's it's just yeah. like, yeah. It, it wasn't anything to write home about. It's just like. It's very British, and it's very cool in that way, but uh, I can't give this a higher than a four, sadly. Yeah, I don't remember what I gave it. Um, it says it came out in Ju middle of June, though, so yeah, I do remember watching right. this. Let's see, what okay, did I see? Okay. Dino Hunter finale, Dino Hunter's finale bro, on Discovery okay. Channel. This is that show okay. that I watched. It's all about these ranchers who are d looking for dinosaurs. I only six episodes in the season, which I'm guessing is because they had to stop filming due to COVID-19, and then they just kind of mm -hmm. made it work. Um, but they do actually have a nice finale on it. They wrap it up pretty well. Uh, it does seem like this season could have been longer, uh, but overall I enjoyed it. Mm, for a silly Discovery reality show, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Cool. I think I probably will give it a shot. I would recommend it to you, because I think you would definitely yeah. like it. I like that kind of shows. Uh, I saw Helter Skelter. This is about uh, Charles Manson. Uh, this is a documentary on Amazon that is extremely weird shot. In the way that it's kind of... How do I explain this? It's filmed in the way that you're supposed to think it's... Uh, documentary but you're also supposed to think it's not and in the way they are filming it it's kind of linear and wants to be it's produ uh, pr uh, like presenting itself as a normal show by also being a documentary do you understand what I mean at all kind of but it's very vague what you're saying right so Let's say you have a normal show about the the Charles, Charles Manson murder, right? So this documentary is presenting it in a way that it could be a normal show, but it is a documentary. So it's kind of weird. It's just like feels... It doesn't feel documentary-like. And I didn't like that. So I'm giving it a five... Yeah. Okay, uh, something that came back. I guess there's one thing we both saw on Netflix, so we'll, we'll probably cover that last, right? Um, right. Something that came back, uh, it went on hiatus as far as I could tell when COVID happened, uh, because it was like they, all the episodes were scheduled for Tacoma FD, and then at episode six, it just stopped, because I think they didn't have any more filmed, and now they're ah. back this week with episode seven, which after like three and a half months of not being on TV. So Tacoma FD is back on, uh, what is it, TBS. Is it uh, still as good? I like it. It's very f funny, uh, irrational funny, like just silly, ridiculous. It's the guys who did Super Troopers, so it's that very irreverent kind of right. comedy. Yeah. I saw a British comedy show called Ladhood. Uh, being a lad is being a boy in uh, British I think it's more like being a, like a you know a sporty boy 
The guy who right. likes the sports. He's a lad. He likes to drink yeah. beer and go He's out and lad. watch the footy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a comedian called Liam Wilson, uh, and he explores like the root of modern day masculinity, and it's very, very uh, funny. I recommend it. Uh, I give it an eight. Oh, really? Wow. That sounds like something I yeah. might enjoy, actually. Uh, I, I guess I only saw one more thing, so you go ahead. No, I haven't. More. Oh, well, then we both saw Fear City, uh, New York versus the Mafia, right? Yeah. On Netflix. A uh, documentary show, for sure. This isn't good. <laughs> I was not super engaged by it. I guess is a good way to put it. Like it was perfectly fine as a like the documentary mm-hmm. style, the way it's filmed, the interviews or mm-hmm. whatever, but like the actual content of the documentary, I wasn't really engaged in it the way I've been about other Netflix docs like Tiger King and things like that. Yeah, no, I have I had so much problem getting into it. It's like I tried very hard to kind of like get into it, and I didn't really get it. It's just like it, they presented it in a very, like you said, in a very sterile way. It's maybe the way I'm. I could say it. It is because it it seems a little too cold. Do you understand what I mean? I just didn't like. Um, it feels like. Um, what's a good word for it? It feels like it was made for some very dry channel, like uh, uh, the crime channel, like a very random cable channel that's like very low production, but this had right. fairly good production, but the content seemed like content you would find on the discovery, some crappy Discovery Channel Lifetime right. Channel show. Right. Uh, actually, there's one more thing that I was hoping you watched, but it sounds like you didn't. Labor of Love finale? Yes! Oh, did. Yes! We talked about this last week. Yes, right. I totally forgot that I watched this because it, it wasn't that good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you don't say it wasn't that good. Hmm? Sorry? I said you don't say it wasn't that good, huh? No, it wasn't. Uh, but yeah, she was happy with this uh, one guy. So she... at the uh, Spoilers for a shit show, by the way. Uh, so at the end, she had to pick between the sensible choice in her head or the man she had fallen in love with. And she, of course, she picks the man that she falls in love with. So Right, the one guy uh, was a CEO and millionaire, right, who had, like, right. a giant apartment and, like, uh, a, you know, he had a life set out for himself already that she could just insert into, where the other guy was... Uh, he wasn't that well off, but he wasn't doing too bad. He was just a regular businessman kind of thing with a regu- regular house, regular apartment. Uh, and she picked the regular guy instead of the rich CEO, I guess, right? Yeah. And he started crying. Uh, of course, as they all do in the show. And uh, yeah, it ends up uh, happily ever after. Uh, that was until I googled it. <laughs> right. And yeah, and I sent you uh, uh, a message that I was sad because, guess what? They have went from each other. They've separated what? already. It's been a week and a half since the show, or, yeah, a week and a half since the show ended, and they're already broken what up. The show? the show that what? was designed for her to figure out who she was going to have a child with, <laughs> it only took them a week and a half to break up. That's what, right. What the shock. Oh, and and she didn't have a kid, by the way. They didn't, like, have yeah. sex, and then she got pregnant, and then they broke up, which would have been... Right. Uh, I, I forgot that I watched uh, a Netflix show called The Twelve. It's a Flamish uh, uh, show about 12 jury members. Uh, I don't think you will like this, but this was definitely, definitely up my alley. And I give it actually a 9 uh, out of 10. I really liked it. Okay, another thing we both saw, Tough as Nails, episode 4. Did we watch it? We pretty much watched it, yeah. Because I think it was a fever dream, because it is bullshit! 
Episode 4 for Release the Bull, tensions run high during a team challenge when one crew has issues with communication while building a large fence on a farm. So I have nothing problem with this show other than, well, there was lack of slow motion until they did some water scenes and that was supposed to be hot for... I think they just wanted reason. the slow motion because the water, it was like a sprinkler. And so a sprinkler in slow motion looks cool. That was my right. only thought as to why they did that. But, uh, okay. So let me set the scene for you, audience that haven't seen the show. And I really, really hope that you haven't seen the show. So in the two, three episodes we have seen before this, it has been a straight competition between men and women on the same level. Every competition has been like, you do great in whatever you do. There's no difference between you being a man or a woman. So what do they fucking do in this episode, Luke? Well, the final competition, where the competition to decide who's going to, be eliminated from the uh, the singles competition because nobody really gets eliminated. Uh, the final competition they make the rules change. So in this competition, it's a man versus a woman, and the woman's uh, got a shorter distance to go, and she has smaller hay bales. And the competition is you got to stack up hay bales and bring a bell standing on top of them. Uh, for some reason, they decided this episode that instead of everybody being considered equal, which has been every single competition so far, this this one they decided was not going to be. And lo and behold, the person with the disadvantage loses. <laughs> it is so fucking rigged. And uh, this is the fakest reality show I have ever seen. There's nothing reality about this reality show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all scripted. I, we have a feeling that all these contestants, I put in air quotes, are all just actors in real right. life. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so fake. It is so fake. And that's kind of why it, it's great, because it's so terrible. But overall, this episode was one of the worst out of the four. I would say this one's getting like a... It's, what, a, a 1.5? Because I've already given 1. one a 2, 5, so yeah. I don't know how I go down yeah. from there. <laughs> it is one of the worst episodes. I give it 1.5 as well. Yeah, I don't know, 1.5, maybe even a 1. Interview time, Luke. We are not alone. We are not. Uh, our guest today is a Buddhist author, Von Gohl. Uh, Von's perspective on Starseed Awakening and the ascension of Earth further into the fifth dimension comes... From her upbringing as a Buddhist, she will explain how ancient alien souls incarnated into Earth at this time to help with our transition to into the galactic golden age of humanity, but many starseeds struggle to awaken and, and the ascension to the fifth dimension with Earth. Vaughn spent the last 20 years compiling scientific research through following the collaboration between Buddhist monks and academic research institutions to explain how all sacred geometry is Buddhist mandalas. In her book, Buddhist Mandalas, Exploring Parallel Realities with Sacred Geometry, she explains how people can rewire their merkabas so they can thrive in the fifth dimension parallel reality. She has earned a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Washington and earned an MBA in e-business management from Westwood College of Technology. Uh, aside from being an author, she is a working mom uh, in and in the IT inter industry. She lives in Seattle, Washington with her husband and two children. H Hello, Von Gaul. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited. I've listened to some of your podcasts and they're fabulous. Awesome, oh, thank, thank you. you. Yes, yes. Definitely intrigues the mind, I must say. <laughs> I mean, that's what we go for yeah, here, I guess. Of, yeah. <laughs> that's one <laughs> of the things that we like to do, is having a, a different main topic every week, is to, to get everybody involved. Yes, yes. We're all going to go down the rabbit hole together in different ways, and... The journey's going to be a little bit different for everyone. Right. So one of the topics we did in the past was indigo children. Um, I don't know if that's maybe one of the reasons you found us, but 
you talk a lot about star seeds, which I think are similar to indigo children. Like, do you see a difference? Uh, how and how did you get interested in this topic? Yes. Yeah, so just a really basic framework. So like like you said in the intro, um, most of my information f- about ascension awakening and the fifth dimension comes from my childhood upbringing in Buddhism and again um, through following the efforts of many Buddhist monks and nuns in academia to go into modern science and see if much of the material that we have about metaphysics consciousness, meditation, mindfulness, if much of the material that we have and have been studying for almost 2,600 years actually meets up with the modern science and also to see if some of the ancient understandings about how consciousness creates reality, if some of the fuzzy concepts can be clarified with the modern science that we have. So early on, it was fringe science, but now it's very mainstream because of all the data that has come through from all these wonderful universities and researchers all over the world, adding their little piece into the puzzle. And so what what I found through that is that spirituality is basically science-based living. And um, a lot of this stuff has been already discovered in ancient times and we're just rediscovering it because what is happening right now on earth is that earth is moving into the fifth dimension which is a parallel reality of higher frequency and higher and faster manifestations and so a okay lot of- i gotta stop you right there so what yes fifth dimension okay you kind of explained it but what exactly does that mean because the way you described it it's a little confusing for some people yes so um, and this is goes into your question of star seeds and indigos, and why are they incarnating in abundance at this time on Earth? Okay. Okay, because it it, it kind of goes together in hand in hand. Um, so we're gonna kind of re back, uh, turn back time, and go into this funky year called 2012. Okay, well, it's that funny year everybody you know, right? I remember. About. Yeah. Yep. Everybody had their own experience. So, anyways. In short, many indigenous cultures like the chiefs of Easter Island, uh, chiefs of Mayans, Native American chiefs, and Buddhists, we did what they called the awakening ceremony. And all we did was basically close out a cycle of polarity, consciousness, and welcome in a new energy to the earth, which is uh, a fifth dimensional energy of unity consciousness, where everything works in unison um, and collaboration. So that's all we did. We just closed out an old cycle, welcoming a new one. Nothing fabulous, just some ritual that we've been waiting thousands thousands of years to do. How did we well, know that happened or what was like this signifier that we changed from one reality to to another? Well, in the Buddhist era, um, 2012 is actually the year because we go the year of change comes from um, the beginnings of Buddhism. So 2012 actually translates to 2,555 for that year. In the Buddhist calendar. In the Buddhist era calendar. Right, okay. So 2,555, people who are angel numbers really resonate with that number. It's basically a year of change. It's the changeover year. And they've had it for a very long time waiting to do that. In science, because I've been following 20 years of the scientific research into these topics, in science we know that the energy has changed on Earth. And we know that scientifically through what they call the Schumann Resonance. And in short, um, what the Schumann Resonance is, it's like the heart song or the heartbeat frequency of the Earth, of the electromagnetics of the Earth. And they, they held this project for the last 20 years and still do it at Princeton University. Um, HeartMath Institute, Noetic Science, the Institute of Noetic Sciences participated, and they basically wanted to find out, is the Earth alive, and does she respond to the heartbeats of all these people who live around these random number generators all over the world that they put, put in? And what they found in the science is that the indigenous traditions that believe these um, about the Earth was true. Human beings, just like animals, send out 
an energy of anxiety or stress or just some kind of emotion out into the ethers from their hearts. Okay. And they respond much like animals do when a impending natural disaster is going to happen, like a hurricane or earthquake. Animals or a storm. Know, or a storm. They know they could feel the energy change, and so they start squirreling and running to high ground for sanctuary. Humans do the same thing. We just don't know it. And so what they found through 20 years of research, which everyone can go to the website and look at 20 years of data, event after event after event, and look at the scientific data um, on the website, newsphere.princeton.edu. So that's N-O-O-S-P-H-E-R-E dot princeton.edu. And you can take a look at the research. And what they found is that hours before any major event around the world happens, the Earth's Schumann resonance, it spikes. And then it comes down afterwards. So I, I've got a question about this, actually. I've done a bit of research into the Schumann resident, resonance. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess my question is, what do you define the Earth as? Because what you're saying is the electrical impulses from the Earth, right? From, like, the actual physical rock? Or are you saying, like, are you considering the Earth everything that we live in, including, like, the ionosphere and everything else? Yes, the ionosphere factors into it. The, okay. the, random, number gen the random number generators function much like a seismology. Because I've, what I've been doing some research on is the effect of this human resonance on the human body. And what I've seen is that uh, the human, re like, the actual... Uh, electrical impulse of the earth is less than say if you were in a city the amount of electricity that's surrounding you at all time that's man-made electricity if that makes sense that's affecting your body way more than the earth's electrical in energy i also saw that um most of the schumann resonance is coming from the ionosphere because a lot of those spikes that at least in the research i've done is coming from storms such as lightning storms which would make sense because it's electrical energy. Uh, does that yes. factor into... That factors into it for natural um, events, but they also have history of um, global social events that also affect the Earth's magnetics. Oh, really? So okay. there's plenty... Yeah, so there's plenty of data, and you can look to the website. There's 20 years of data. They... It functions the same way the Earth actually responds to the millions of hearts sending out this huge pulse energy through their hearts because our hearts have um, an electromagnetic energy that's five times stronger than our brain. And so right. millions of people around a generator is feeling an emotion about something. The Earth at times will respond to it as well. And it did that with 9-11. They did that with Hurricane Katrina. And they did that with many other human events as well. But so it's not just. I, I guess my point was is. That be, was that before or after the event? Hours before it happens. Oh, Do really? Again. Before the event. Okay, so not at the same time. Before. I kind of thought it would have been happening kind of at the, as the event was happening. No, because humans, much like animals, feel the energy is changing and we're all connected. There's the same stream of consciousness that resides in everyone equally. And we're kind of psychic. We kind of know something's happening. And so these random number generators pick up that surge of energy hours before it happens. And then the event happens. Okay. And it's, it's 20 years of data that you can look up yourself. And right. time and time again. It's natural disasters or um, social events. And not all social events will affect her. Sometimes she doesn't get affected at all by some social events. But anyways, that's a basic short understanding of how we know something's happening. And ever since, hmm, it's been happening since the late 90s. But it was happening in small bursts. But ever since 2012, it's been happening more and more. And up until this year, she's been, her regular heartbeat is 7.83. When, um, on her resting phase, she's been the going earth. to the earth. Right, okay. She's been going to maybe 10 hertz, maybe 12, maybe 20, and they were excited because that usually doesn't happen. But as we got further into this time, she's starting to take big jumps. She's taking, um, going from 7.83 to 20, to 40, to 100, to right. 110. She's taking these leaps. And what is, what is happening is that when the energy changes, things, uh, move much faster and we move into 
the higher energies. And in Buddhism, we call those higher energy realities existing in a parallel reality. And what we call that is the fifth dimension, which is the last physical known dimension that physicality can exist in. All the other ones above that are spiritual dimensions. Okay, so I got so, two so questions. You said, you said a very interesting thing that I, I kind of want to ask. You said this happened since the 1990s. We have had uh, two war, world wars before that. Why didn't the Earth uh, react to those events? They started the research process in 1999. Oh, so we, just, okay. we just didn't have the data, is the thing. We didn't have the data. Okay. But in 20 years of research, the first 10 years, it was small little jumps in frequency. In the last um, decade, it's been big leaps. Especially at this year, it's been even bigger leaps because the world globe is being affected by um, a big event this year. So I have two questions about, about this. So the Schumann re resonance, as I am to understand, is measuring a lot of ionosphere radiation uh, and electrical electrical impulses in, in the sky. One thing that's happened over the last bunch of years is things like HARP. I don't know if you know what that is in Alaska, where they're actually I shooting do. electrical impulses into the ionosphere. Do you think that could be affecting the readings you're getting, possibly? Princeton's readings have been going on for 20 years, and whether right. they did that or not, it didn't affect any of the readings. I'm just saying since 2012, since you're seeing such h higher numbers could it be being caused by these kind of things i know there's more than the events, just harp there's one in russia there's uh, uh there's ones all no. over the globe right so no the events themselves is what's causing ah. the surge in numbers and then my second question was how does this relate back to star seeds to get us back on track thank a little you. bit thank you so that's a short so we know that the Earth is moving and taking these big leaps. So let me give you a quick analogy for how to understand this. It's like when energy changes, it's like you're sailing. And when you're sailing and you're moving in a third dimensional way, where you're doing everything by yourself and um, you're, not re you're doing the same methods that you always have and the wind slowly changes, but you don't notice the difference. Sure. And then a big whoosh comes in and you're going, what's that? But you still do the same thing. You're sailing the same third dimension away. And then bigger and bigger wishes, bigger and bigger jumps in energy surges come through. And you, what you need to realize is that you need to lift your sails, get your crew together and work in unison and collaboration and clear communication so that you're working in perfect strides to take advantage of these higher um, wind pulses and use those knots to go further faster into a better area of the earth and that's what's happening the energy has changed on earth we know this things are moving faster things are manifesting faster and mm -hmm. your time is not as as um as long you can't get things done in the time frame that you used to because time is moving faster so you have to work in the higher energies of unity, collaboration, and communicate with the people that you're working with. Because you just can't do it all by yourself in these higher dimensions. And, I mean, we're seeing massive protests all around the world. Is that related to the that coming together of the peoples? Yes. Yeah, so um, we do need to get back to star seeds, but just very quickly. So when they were doing research in the Schumann Resonance, they actually studied... Um, 72 countries worldwide um, and 72 countries worldwide what they found is during these surges in the magnetics of the earth um, they actually looked at it between 1749 and 1926 Alex Chevesky which he is a researcher that studied solar sun cycles what they found in the research of studying solar sun cycles in 72 countries is that 80% of the big events, whether it's wars or social renaissance, occur during these peaks in the Schumann Resonance. And so basically science tells us is that during these times when Earth is changing her electromagnetics into these higher frequencies, mm -hmm. It's an amplifier for people. It will amplify what you are. Okay. So if you have dense issues, if you're confrontational, if you have unresolved 
a dark night of the souls, those kind of things. It's going to bring in those warriors in your life and bring it up for you to resolve. So you want to resolve them. Otherwise, in these higher energies, it will continue to bring it up worse and worse and worse until you resolve them because they don't belong in the higher dimensions. At the same time, if you already worked on those repressed dense issues, it's going to bring up what you are, which is more abundance, more creativity, more opportunities. And so you have a different challenge on how to focus so that you can achieve your goals. So that's that's the tools of these higher energies of the fifth dimension. Is that a, what a star seed it, is? Is somebody who has already no, transcended that? Okay, go ahead. No. That's the tools. The game has changed to a fifth dimensional level of energy. And so if you want to thrive in the fifth dimension, you need to know how the energy works. So instead of having wars in your life, you have renaissance. Does that make sense? I want to make sure that we understand the changes I, in the Earth's energy. I understand the changes in the Earth's energy. I'm still confused about star seed and fifth dimension. So uh, Going to that. Right going into that because because you guys asked a lot of questions about the human resonance so i want right to yeah no, no it's fine okay so star seeds and indigos so in buddhism we call we wrap them all into one term called toku children and basically what they are are very ancient souls that have had experiences not just on earth but in other planets other galaxies other dimensions okay they're just ancient souls so, so they could have been an alien being in a past life. Or, or do you believe in alien, like extraterrestrial, or are you talking about interdimensional? Both. Both, okay. Continue, sorry. It could be either or. They're ancient souls that have a couple go-arounds in, phys- in the physical creation experience. Right, okay. In creation, okay? So we just call them toku children. But um, it's a lot of this concept has been modernized by um, Dolores Cannon and many others who have brought up the topics of indigo and star seed and toku. And basically the only difference is star seeds are people who have had previous incarnations as what you would call aliens in different planets and galaxies. Okay. And indigos are just ancient, ancient souls that came from source that maybe have not had as much of a... Um, rotation through the wheel of dharma into the physical experience but they just happen to be extra already special no one's special okay no one's special okay okay so that's because when we did this is one thing when we we did indigo children some people believe and i'm not saying you believe this but that some indigo children will have telekinesis and the ability to you know fly and all these things which we found kind of um Seemingly ridiculous. So let me explain that. Okay. So the thing is that when what's happening right now, and we have forecast this for a very long time in Buddhism, and I actually do quantum healing hypnosis, which is one of the modalities that I found through um, my research in energy medicine for book two of Buddhist mandalas that I'm working on. Right. Um, And it was developed by the, the late Dolores Cannon. And there's wonderful practitioners all, all, all over the world, which you can find off of her registry. But, she has a website. Um, I've, I've seen her website, yeah. Yeah, DoloresCannon.com. So um, I do actually do that modality because it allows me the opportunity to use all of these wonderful metaphysical knowledge that I have through my tradition of Buddhism and apply it into practice. And I often get clients who are um, ancient souls, and many of them are star seeds or source code souls, or what you would call indigo. Okay. And they all came here for the same reason. They came here to build the fifth dimension. Right. Okay. But the problem that they get oftentimes is they struggle to get further into their awakening and ascension process to make it the fifth dimension because it's all about energy. Because they're stuck in the wheel of dharma and stuck in the third dimensional way of thinking. All those human dramas are keeping their frequency down and making it hard for them to transition. And so what I typically get in my practice is we will go over various lifetimes that show what the blockages that is holding down their energy 
in their life. Okay. Give them transparency in it so they can understand why it is what it is so they can work on those issues that are holding down their awakening and then answer any kind of nuances in their life in their awakening and ascension process and then oftentimes at the very end the oversoul which is in everyone you meet everyone it's the same person i talk to every time same exact person um that consciousness will give this person their fifth dimensional business plan or career path for how they can thrive in these new energies. And um, some of my recordings have, are on my YouTube channel so you can listen to what these um, QHHT sessions are all about and what kind of blueprint is given. Okay. And many of them are much the same, actually. They're mostly caregiver and um, caretaker type of jobs. And I can kind of go over some of them as well. So... That's basically what's going on with these ancient alien star seed souls that are incarnating on Earth at this time because what you call the aliens cannot come in and uh, just tell us what to do because that's against the I mean, the prime directive is actually a real thing. Um, so it's against consciousness. Okay. Consciousness, consciousness wants you to do it and grow from it yourself because otherwise there'll be no point in you existing if it just did everything for you so in order for them to help steer the game into a more positive outcome many of these souls um, incarnated within the game of creation within the earth game as one of the humans so they understand our issues so they can work within the the, the game to change the game from within so that's what is the game though what is the, game the game is the game of life. Okay. So consciousness, consciousness, what, what happened, and they found this in science as well. It's all in my book, and I find this in to my QHHT practice, is that consciousness, or the Lord, whatever you want to call it, it right. gave itself a gift. And the gift it gave itself is to split up into all these different fractal souls so that each one of these souls can have its own individual experience and learn and grow and experience creation. And so in order to, to do that, the consciousness inside everyone, the oversoul, is actually experiencing everything that you are and you do firsthand and um, enjoying your triumphs and your sweetness and your sorrows and all of that. And that's the gift it gives to itself to experience the wonder of itself through you. Right. So some souls will decide, I want to play the game of the physicality. So they will incarnate into a body in some planet, whether it's Earth or Dramana or anybody else, or in some dimension, they will incarnate into the game of creation for its own purposes. And it's not all bad. Many people uh, will be born to experience good stuff. So it's not a slave planet. Earth is not a slave planet. And the Oversoul makes that very clear because that always comes up with my star seeds. Okay, so, so, so to make this kind con- hopefully I'm getting this correct. I'm just going to try to make it a little clearer and it, tell me if I'm getting this right or not. So the star seeds are coming down to help humans who are just regular humans uh, both change their consciousness so that the humans can be in the fifth dimension, but at the same time changing the consciousness of the Earth so that the Earth can move itself into the fifth dimension? The Earth is already moving. She doesn't need you to help it. The star the seeds, star are, seeds. aren't building There's, the fifth dimension. The Earth is building the, the fifth dimension. No, no, no. It's a collaboration. Okay, so where the is ancient, the fifth dimension? Maybe that's where we're, we're getting confused. Because where is is there a the physical fifth, fifth dimension, dimension or is it like a non-physical thing? It's an energy thing. Right. The fifth dimension. Okay, let me ask you this: Are you familiar with parallel realities? Right, but yeah. a, par- a parallel reality would be a physical reality. Right. It is a physical reality, but have you had your own personal Mandela effects? I mean, we've covered on the show. Yeah, so uh, we've talked but have about you it. Had your own personal ones. So, like, um, like, do you remember Ed McMahon growing up, who would send uh, deliver the publishers' clearinghouse prizes? Sure. Yeah. Some people vividly remember that. That was part of the childhood. But in this reality, Publishers Clearinghouse says that that never happened. They never had a contract with him. Also, another example is many people used to watch Sinbad growing up in a movie called uh, Shazam. 
Right, we covered this. And yeah. In this yeah, in this reality that never existed, and Sinbad says it never happened. There's also personal Mandela effects, where you will look in your neighborhood and a huge tree will show up in your neighborhood one day that was never there and you've lived there for 30 years. You might even have personal Mandela effects and some of my clients come in for this where they're looking at the body and the tattoo that was on their right leg is now on their left leg and they're going, how did that happen? I guess one question is, if somebody doesn't, um, if a person doesn't uh, open themselves up or uh, transcend to that level where, where they can enter the fifth dimension and the whole trans, like we transition from, I assume the fourth dimension into the fifth dimension, but that person hasn't transcended in their mind. What's going to happen to them in the fifth? They stay dimension? in the third dimension. Oh, they don't go. They, they don't, don't come. Okay. They don't go. It's all about energy. So it's simple physics. Like just getting your physics growing up, we learn everything. All energy kind of clusters around similar energy fields. It's the same thing. Okay. So people who radiate at a higher frequency, and oftentimes people who are having their awakening and ascension symptoms and working on these kind of things, raising the, their level of consciousness, they are going to be a higher frequency that they're going to exist in a parallel reality of the fifth dimension where everything works faster, uh, manifests faster, etc. Um, whereas other people who this is not a reality that they want to live in because they just continue to manifest their worst fears. They like the third dimension. They like that density. And so those people um, will not be working on raising their level of consciousness and their energy field. Um, and so they'll stay in the third dimension with third dimensional issues. Right, okay. They won't be building the, the, the fifth dimension. So the so Mandela Earth, effect is, is like an effect that we're seeing being caused by the transition. Yes, it's okay. being caused by you. When you change your consciousness, when you change your perspective on things, and when you do your inner work, you actually change your energy signature. Okay? You actually remove those abundance blocks, that those dense issues that hold down your energy. And when you raise your energy, you raise your consciousness to a level that you cannot physically exist in a parallel reality that is dense. You actually have to exist in a higher reality and the higher reality will have a slightly different variation than you last remember your consciousness travels from one parallel reality to another that's why when i had a client come in going why is my tattoo on my left leg and not my right leg his consciousness when he made a change about how he saw something his consciousness change whereas now it's moved to a parallel version in a higher parallel reality where he made the tattoo in the other leg and he's also has a so healthier. I I have I have read your book. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I I I have one question that I think. Yes. Uh, I I don't really understand uh, one very like basic thing. How can we have proof for this fifth dimension at all existing in the third dimension? How can you convince me that what you It doesn't you need to be convincing. Are... It doesn't need to well, be convincing. Well, it, just... it needs to be convincing for me because right. if you, you're writing a book that you want me to to become something in the fifth dimension, you have to kind of prove that the fifth dimension right. exists, doesn't it? So, this is a good premise. So, base, it's based on people. So, people... When they work but what on, do you mean by that? What do you uh, mean? Let me explain. By... Let me explain. Yeah. So people, when they're working on these um, aspects of the awakening and ascension, they are going to have the personal experience. They're going to have the personal Mandela effects experiences that nobody else can really fully understand. It's kind of one of those things. It's kind of like being loved. You can't really explain being in love until you experience it for yourself. Then you know it. And you know it's true. Moving into these higher dimensions and having a person Mandela effect and seeing the changes in physical reality and experiencing it firsthand is something that has to be experienced. Right. And I have plenty of but, clients that but, come but, in. But, but here's the problem. I can say that there's a teapot in the sky and I can't prove it. It is up to me to give you proof that that teapot exists or uh, you can go on with your life 
thinking that There's keep us doesn't of exist. People. You know, you know, you know the ruffle. Right. Ruffle of there it, are right? plenty of people, like the Mandela effect is a really good example. There are thousands and millions of people um, all over the world who can tell you definitively that they had this experience and this is what they experienced. There are thousands and millions of people that are Muslims. There are thousands and, uh, yes, and of people have that the are, that are Scienti them. Scientologists. Right. You and don't have, have proof or anything. They're going to have the reality that fits them. There are more than ways to go down the rabbit hole. And everyone has a slightly different experience. Okay? But for people who, like, let's say people who can tell you verbatim the, the movie Shazam storyline, who the character is, what they look like, and they don't know each other at all, and they're from different parts of the world, and they don't know each other, they have no skin in the game. Um, and they know that they have this experience, that's your evidence that they are talking about reality that's different from the one that they're experiencing directly now. But as a, as a former Mormon, I can tell you that when I, 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 I read the uh, Book of Mormon, I thought that was a testimony of God. That wasn't proven to be right. So I'm asking you, what uh, kind of proof do you have for the audience that listening to this, that they should follow. I think that was the proof like, right there. From I think I think she yeah. was saying the proof is that people are agreeing on these things, and but they don't have any skin in the game, and that's the proof. Is that what you were saying? That's exactly the proof. Okay, there we're getting we have like five minutes powerful. left, so we need to like oh, okay. yeah slowly wrap up. If you have like uh, an ending bit, you and then maybe la uh, two last questions we can ask you. Yeah, the, the thing is, is that this is an experiential reality. There is what you are intended to experience. If it is not resonating with you, it's not for you. If it resonates for you, because there, there are plenty of people who are having nuances in the reality, they're having time slips, they're having time skips, their six senses, and many of them are, are starseeds and toku, their six senses are coming in these higher realities, and there's getting a little scared of their six senses and looking for ways to adjust and kind of adjust to these new energies, there is resources out for you as well. And some of that is in my book, Buddhist Mandalas, and it's actually a three-volume book. I'm working on volume two right now. But the thing also is in my QHHT session, the Oversoul says the same thing to everyone. So I put it in these phrases that I like to kind of leave your audience with. You've always been enough. Use the gifts and the resources all around you to create a life you want to experience. A life full of joy and love. And the spirit world will nudge you through synchronicity. You can do it. So I hope that resonates with you. And if, if, if not, and this material does not resonate with you, that's fine as well. There's more ways to go down the rabbit hole. And right. you're going to get the journey that's perfect for you. Okay, cool. Um... I don't, uh, do you have any more questions, Fro? Yeah, my last question is this. Uh, you wrote a book about flowers. Uh, what did inspire you by an I'm actually a wedding flowers? florist. Yes, ah. wedding florist. So I make... Um, I make wedding flowers and I deliver it to the venues. So I have a couple different hobbies and it's actually my meditation. So writing is my meditation, making wedding flowers is my, my meditation. And I love to create coloring books off of my experiences as well. So I kind of have, I dabble into a couple of different um, things as well as my IT job. So. Oh, cool. That is so cool. And yeah. then do yeah. you have a website people can visit that you want to plug or anything else you want to plug? YouTube yeah, page? Yeah, yeah. All of my offerings are on my website, Merkaba Chakras, M-E-R-K-A-B-A, -A -A, Chakras, like you said, so Chakras.com. So, um, you know, you can go down the rabbit hole that way as well. Um, like I said, if you're having your personal awakening and ascension symptoms and you're looking for material to help you with this process, MacabreChakras.com has plenty of information, and there are other websites out there as well that offer material to help you with this. But if this doesn't resonate with you, then it's not part of your journey. But if it is part of your journey, um, this is this is the stuff that is going to help you with that. Thank you so much for being on. Yeah, thank you so much. And hopefully, I mean, we're all about just 
getting the information out to people if you don't like she said if you don't uh, believe in this or you don't want to accept this then don't and if you do then good for you uh we, we're just here to put the information out for everybody to have exactly 12 months of hell luke 12 months of hell yeah for july yeah Hmm, sorry? For July. Uh, this is oh, for 12, July. So. 12 Months of Hell is where me, I give Fro a movie that I've seen, but he has not seen. And it has to be mm -hmm. a really bad movie. Fro's going to give it a score, 1 out of 10, right? But 10 being the worst and 1 being the best? Well, 1 being it's plausible it's okay to watch like uh, uh, i'm going kind of like if it was a normal scale i am going from 5 to 15 <laughs> right and then we're going to take your scores and we're going to make a bracket like you know a bracket how you go yep. top seed versus the bottom seed and then at the end of the year after we do 12 movies uh, i guess at the beginning of next year technically we're going to do yes. a tournament to decide which one of these is the worst movie, and this month I pick Clifford from 1994, starring Martin Short. Yeah, and uh, Mary uh, Steenberger, Steenberger. Uh, and Richard Kind, and Charles Grodin. Yeah. So this is about this very obnoxious ten-year-old called uh, Clifford. We meet him first as a priest, and then we go back in time. And he is obsessed with dinosaurs. Because he's 10. He's a 10-year-old boy. Of course, he's played by Martin yeah. Short, who's about 45 or 50. <laughs> and, and, and here's, here's one of my <laughs> biggest problems. Because Martin Short is many, many, many things. But he's not a great actor. So you don't believe that he's 10 years old... When he looks older than his own fucking mother. <laughs> but uh, uh, there is fart jokes, and there is fart jokes, and there's a Tabasco toast scene, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then there's a fart joke, and then he play with dinosaurs, and... <laughs> Then there's there's this uh, hyperdrive scene, and uh, he is obsessed with chocolate, and his dad is going nuts, and oh, this was bad, but it wasn't the worst thing you have given me. I'm still going to give it a very clear seven point five on the pain scale, right? Because it is in incredibly not me you you i think you found the most not me movie in the entire fucking world i just think him acting like a child is really hard to watch that's the thing oh, i think is really so hard. hard him pretending to be a kid because he's like overacts being a child it's ridiculous right the only thing he was good in by the way is three amigos oh that was a good movie yeah yes <laughs> but he did have two co-hosts, which are both amazing comedy actors, right. so that could have helped. <laughs> yes, yes, that helped. But uh, have you seen any movies this week? Uh, I ask before we talk about that. Guess what I said last week? A little rewind. I'm going to guess that Tenet is going to open in Norway before it opens in the United States. Hmm. Forward in time. Oh, let's see what uh, the news is about. 70 countries to begin opening by the end of August, followed by U.S. Followed by U.S. over Labor Day weekend. So th I guess they are planning on opening later, uh, you know, in America after they open foreign right. box offices. It says the foreign box office showing some signs of... Life in the pandemic, Warner Brothers were opened the long-awaited Christopher Nolan's Tenet in over 70 countries worldwide starting Wednesday, Oct August 30 oh, August 26th. Sorry, The plan includes yeah. Tenet opening in Canada on Thursday, August 27th, before the re U.S. release, which is selected in selected cities September 3rd. Uh, I'm assuming what? they're picking cities where the outbreak isn't as 
prevalent, right? Yeah. And I mean, uh, we have uh, countries like uh, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Denmark. Let's see. Is Norway on the list? Sweden is on the list. Germany is on the list. Hong Kong, which I said last week. Thailand is on the list. Norway is on the list. Friday, October 28th, Norway. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be so, able to check it out, and then I'm assuming the uh, all these other countries are going to be able to check it out. It's just America, which the problem is uh, the COVID outbreaks, and there's other. I'm assuming they're not going to be doing it in uh, Brazil or uh, other countries that have bad right. COVID outbreaks, Sweden and things like that. Yeah, uh, Sweden is on the list there, actually. Is it okay? Yeah, that's kind of strange Sweden. to me, but all right. Yeah. But uh, it's not that strange, you see, because uh, they never closed down. Sweden never right, closed I guess down, that's true. So... They right. were they were never closed. That doesn't mean right. anything, though, really. No, no, no. But it means that uh, the film company uh, don't really have to think about it because they, like I said... They have don't. no liability, is your point. Right. Right, because everybody was already free to do whatever they wanted. Right. Uh, Clint Eastwood, big Hollywood actor, therefore, is suing mm-hmm. CBD sellers, CBD meaning uh, the marijuana version of CBD sellers, over the use of his name and image. Uh, two f- lawsuits in federal court in Los Angeles included allegations that companies have <laughs> spread phony articles reporting that the 90 year old actor director is quitting the movie business to focus on his CBD business. Uh, the lawsuit says Eastwood has no part in the manufacturing, sale, or promotion of CBD, a chemical derived from marijuana. Uh, in the suits that seek millions of damages, Eastwood's, Eastwood claims defendants nearly 20 small companies based in states including Arizona, California, Delaware, and Florida that sell CBD, along with 60 anonymous ent- entities that may be named later in in the criminal lawsuit. So he's suing all these people over CBD. I actually use some CBD cream on my back this week when I put my back out. Mm. It works. That shit works, bro. It's not. There's no doubt about it that that stuff works. Yeah. I uh, wish I could get in in Norway, but you know how Norway is about that. Maybe someday. Maybe someday soon, to be honest. I mean, it's spreading everywhere else. I just think it's funny because Clint Eastwood is like the most... Republican dude ever. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he would, would be very happy. But now you can tell me about the movie, movies you've seen this week. Okay, I saw a movie. Depending on what country you're from, it's either called 2099 The Soldier Protocol here in America or The Wheel if you're in other countries. Uh, it has other okay. na- uh, It actually has other names than that in certain countries, obviously. But uh, this is starring... David Arquette, bro, everybody's favorite mm. WCW champion, David Arquette. Mm-hmm. Um, it's set. It's set in the future, kind of, but it's like this prison that's in the shape of a wheel. So it's a big circle, right? And it's got spokes to the middle where there's a hub area in, and then the, all the cells are on the outside of the uh, wheel, right? And then the middle part is where all the uh, guards are and like the main station. Does that make sense at all? As yes, far as what yes, it looks yes. like. Uh, but this is all about the prisoners there are being uh, in- injected with um, nanobots that are, you know, that like can heal them. So then the guards will go in and beat up the soldiers t- so that they can experiment on these nanobots and see how well the nanobots will fix the person, even bring them back to life. This is a terrible movie. Um. <laughs> <laughs> David Arquette is not great. Uh, everybody else in this is not great. It has some okay, like action scenes, fight choreography, but other than that, this is a terrible film. I'm gonna give it a three. Cool. I saw a movie question mark uh, documentary on Netflix. It's only forty minutes, but it is on Netflix, and it's uh, about speed cubers. Uh, people that uh, solve the Rubik's Cube mm-hmm. uh, I, I, in uh, under seven seconds. 
This is one of the most interesting 40 minutes I have had in a very, very, very long time. I recommend this very much. It is so cool because it's kind of a, a thing that I wish I had. And it's only 40 minutes, so it's like you don't have to take a lot of time out of your life to watch this. So, yeah, I give it a 9. Okay, I saw a Prime movie, um, Amazon Prime, uh, okay. called Radioactive, starring okay. uh, Rosamund Pike, is the main character in this. Ooh, I Sam, like her. Sam yeah. Riley is in it. It's actually about uh, Marie Curie and how she created mm. uh, radioactive elements, or not created, mm. but she discovered radioactive elements. Right. And But it's kind of like, but it's got a, like a butterfly effect thing to it, where it's like, it shows her discovering things, and then it shows the future, what that caused. Like, she discovers plutonium, and then it shows uh, Japan during, at you know, right. at the end of World War II. Um, so it kind of is very interesting in that way. Uh, I thought it was fairly good. Um, a little bit boring, but very well shot. Acting is amazing. Uh, I'll give it an 8. I think it's got like 60% on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. So they don't agree with mm. me 100%, but I thought the acting... Uh, made up for kind of the slowness of the story. Rosman Pike is one of the amazing, one of the best actresses uh, right now, I think. Kind of underrated, even. Another, yeah. Yeah. Hit me with another movie you've seen this week. Bad Boys for Life from January. Fro, oh, my starring, God. Yeah, starring Will Smith. Uh <laughs> I don't think there's been a movie that's aged worse than this movie yep. in six months because it came out in January <laughs> yeah. before everything that happened with, well, not really before everything that happened with Black Lives Matter, but everything that happened with the George well, Floyd pl protests. And if you yeah. watch this movie in retrospect, it is yep. a little bit terrifying because they're talking about, oh, we don't have rules. We just going to beat up uh Let's just beat up the, these guys, and then the, there's another group of, like, younger cops who are all like, oh, no, we don't do, like, unnecessary violence. And the, the older cops are like, yeah, but it's totally necessary to do this violence. And it's it, looking back at it, it's so, like, it, it aged worse than any movie I think I've ever seen, maybe, besides uh, Birth of a Nation. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching this and thinking it was a shit movie back then when I saw it in February or whenever I saw it. Right, okay. But in retrospect, I almost want you to see it again just to see how like out of touch it is now with right. everything that's happened with the Black Lives Matter and the George Floyd protests and everything else. Uh, it's just, I think I probably would have given this like a six in, if I watched it in January, but now it's got to be a three because it just wow, I, it's just doesn't work now. Talking about something I find very interesting, so Netflix came out with a movie this week. It is called The Hater. Uh, it is a Polish movie, and this is maybe one of my favorite movies this year. So it is about this very young man. It's almost about Breivik without being about Bre Breivik, if you kind of get what I mean. So it's about this very radicalized uh, Oh, okay. Man. So it's about somebody else that's kind of the same, is what you're saying. Right. Okay. And uh, how he, he spreads, like... Uh, shit online and how how uh, consequences how many consequences that gets uh, this is a, like I said on Netflix I'm not going to give you a lot of information because guess what this movie is getting a 10 out of 10 look it is called The Hater Da Netflix. like D-A hater? no The The like Hater okay. The Dog or the human. Or, right. Yeah. All right. I saw... Let's see. When did this come out? I saw a movie that came out in May. Oh, no. That's not right. Maybe it is. May 2019? I, I don't know. Maybe Maybe this is right. Maybe it's not. Uh, True Fiction 
from. Okay. Uh, this is about an a, a woman who get to, gets an interview to she wants to work for like her favorite author. She wants to be like his mm-hmm. personal assistant, and he, he's hiring, right? And it's this very secretive author who doesn't really go out into the public all that much, but he's a horror author, right? And so she goes, oh, she gets the thinking. That's what I'm. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Uh, she she gets the job and she goes to his estate, which is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I'm seeing release date USA, February twenty first, two thousand twenty. Okay, okay. Um, so it probably came out in film festivals or something. Uh, she gets the job and she goes there and he she he tells her what she really is there to do, which is kind of it's not to be a personal assistant; it's to help him as a muse. He wants. He's run out of ideas for his books, and so he wants to study her. Uh, he puts her in like this kind of a contraption that's got a big screen, and it's supposed to terrify her so that he can study yeah. her body rhythms and then figure out a new story uh, using her fear. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's okay. a, this is a horror movie. It's called True Fiction. Uh, not really any huge actors you would have heard of, but... It's got a hundred percent tomato meter reading. Um, it's got Ooh. five out of ten on IMDb. I would recommend this to Fro because I know Fro is going to like this. Uh, other people maybe not so much. It's very bloody, but I really liked the twist at the end. So overall, uh, what was it called again? True fiction. True fiction. Right, because uh-huh. it's about this author guy. Uh, I give this a seven point five. Cool. Guess what I'm downloading. <laughs> I think you're gonna enjoy it. Like, yeah, it's right. it's kind of got weird parts where it makes you go, "Oh, what's this or what's that?" But um, the acting's very good, and it's it's a suspense thriller horror movie, I guess. Yeah, and I do enjoy me some horror movies. Uh, hey, let's see uh, the audio trailer for The Big Ugly. God. Land. Oil. It's often said war is way okay. over just these three. I like oh, Vinnie Jones' yeah. voice. I was like, I know that voice. Come here to West Virginia for God. He kind of is like stuck at playing one character, but he's so good being that yeah. character that it always works. Yeah. Ooh, I like him. Yeah. It's from Gangster Number One, one of my favorite British movies. Preston. Look at you. And Pearl. So here we are. It's on this. Wow. What a cast. Preston needs cash flow. Harris needs a cleaner. I got a loan. Kind of dark scene, isn't it? Yeah. I'm an old man. There's so much more. I love you. I want to say I've seen that actress before, but I can barely see her face because it's so dark. She's missing. I need you in London. I'm not leaving till I find her. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the oil boys. I had to sneeze, and I was trying to... Nasty scratch you got there. Oh, you know, a little bit of a dust up. You're looking for answers. Don't do it. Think of the money. Thousands. Oh my gosh, what was that movie with The Rock where he like had the big giant two by four? I don't want a new life. I don't remember. Getting on the bad side. It's the, that's the same. This is the same storyline. Make life easier. <laughs> this is a situation that needs finesse. If I can't stop a beast like him. This uh, movie trailer is making me sneeze. That's for sure. He ain't gonna go like Walking tall. <clears throat> Where he like the guy oh, yeah. shows up at the little town and he has to like find the girl. It beats up, beats up everybody in the town. I don't think I've seen it. Walking it's tall. Yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> I think it was like The Rock's first movie though. I don't remember. What is uh, this? Uh, Oscar nominated movie all about uh, the big ugly fro the uh, London mob bosses invest in a West Virginia oil deal in hopes of laundering their dirty money 44% on Rotten Tomatoes 4.2 out of 10 on IMDb 62% of Google users like this film 
like we said, Ron Perlman, Vinnie Jones, a bunch of other people. Yeah, I really, really want to see this. Is that really a little strange? No, it looks very good. It looks very, very good. I, I, it is just Walking Tall, the like Brit- British version, but that's fine. Right. Uh, so I didn't really find any audience things and like that. So I went to timeout.com. Never, ever heard of that site in my entire life. Me neither. But... First, first time for everything. Yes. And uh, they gave it two out of uh, five stars. Despite an for, uh, on-form Malcolm uh, McDonald, this cheeky gangster thriller is critically short of propulsion. British posh <laughs> gangster meets doggy dog American oil man in a clunky crime thriller that reminds you of old adage about Britain and America being two countries separate by a common fucking language. On one side, there's Malcolm McDonald's to- teetotally cockney crime lord. The other, Ron Perlman, swaggering drilling. In the middle, Winnie Jones with his perma grimacing enforcement. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I went to the Facebook. Um, Heather Clark says the movie was better than I expected. Uh, love seeing all the familiar places. So I guess she's from... West Virginia or something. Uh, mm. John Gr- Grasse says, I was on set as an extra. So this is kind of interesting from the Facebook. Mm. I was sure Brandon was Clint Eastwood's grandson. Due to, dude had that swag and was amazing in, uh, in the few scenes I was lucky enough to be in him with. Dude is cool as hell. Bad boy, no doubt, is what he said. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I uh, I found it online already, so it's easy to get hold of. I mean, it's a, yeah, it just came out Friday, so I'm not not surprised you could find it. Another movie that came out on Friday, The Rental, which I actually almost I almost watched this week, but I uh, the night it oh, happened, yeah? I ended up getting busy. Or the night I was going to watch it, I ended up getting really busy uh, right at the last minute, so I didn't end up watching it. But it's got Alison Brie. Uh, the rental, two couples in an Oceanside getaway grow suspicious that the host of their seemingly perfect rental house may be spying on them. Before a long, what should have been a ce- uh, celebratory weekend, uh, turns out to be something far more sinister. 73% on Rotten Tomatoes, 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb, 4 out of 5 on our favorite common sense media. <laughs> Our definitely favorite side of all time. Wait, it's got four uh, out of five, and it's a thriller horror movie? Okay, whatever. Do uh, you mind taking the last one as well? Okay, Most Wanted. Uh, also came out on Friday. An investigating reporter fights to expose a twisted truth behind a heroin bust or- orchestrated by some dirty cops to frame an innocent man, sentencing him to life in oh in a Thai prison. 63% on Rotten Tomatoes, 6.1 out of 10 on IMDb, 81% of Google users liked it. I guess it's also called hmm. Target Number One, possibly if you're in another country. Uh, uh, my hometown cinema, Lillehammer Cinema, is showing the rental, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Cool. That uh, was the movies of this uh, week. Uh, which movie would you most like to see? Um, I, I honestly, it's probably a tie between the rental and the big ugly. They're so different that I don't know if I could mm-hmm. separate them. But I was going to watch the rental last week, so probably I'd go with that. What about you? Uh, I would probably go with uh, the big ugly. Okay. To be honest, yeah. Just because I haven't seen the trailer for the rental. Um, you can go to audibletrial.com slash another digital citizen. What do you get there, Luke? Uh, you go get a free trial, 30-day free trial with Audible, and they'll give you a free book with your free trial, and you can cancel before the 30 days are up and keep the book, and it also helps us out. Um, but Audible's pretty good, so if you sign up, with our trial, you get a free book, and if you keep it, there's a lot of other good content on there. Yeah, 
for example, you can get the Bane Chronicles book one to seven, a boxed sex, uh, set collection that I got this week. That is only forty out, forty eight hours and seventeen minutes. So I mean, yeah. For okay. Free. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you get it for free as long as you go to audibletrial.com forward slash another digital citizen. Coming next week, news of the week. Obviously, probably some Ghislaine Maxwell news. I'm guessing VP pick for Biden. There's two stories we're looking at now as being big for next week. I so hope they are the same. I so hope they are the same. We saw that uh, Politico <laughs> may have accidentally leaked that Kamala Harris is the vi vice president. Yeah. Uh, that could be Whoopsie. true. It could not be true. We're not really sure, but we probably know by next week if that was a mistake on their part or not. Uh, Do you know what? I'm going to guess it's probably her. <laughs> well, I think it's funny because I think right when Bernie dropped out, we were both like, okay, now yeah. the big question is who's the VP? And I think you guessed Elizabeth Warren and I guess Kamala Harris, and they're both still in the mm -hmm. running. Fro. They're both totally still in the running, so <coughs> we'll see who's uh, right, I guess, about that next week. Uh, I mean, we made those predictions, mm -hmm. what, like five months ago, four months ago or something like that? So Something like that, yeah. A lot has happened since we made those predictions. Uh, another thing, Tough as Nails, episode five, obviously, we're going to watch next week. Another digital mm -hmm. review of The Informer. Do you know what I want to say, sing them? Informer. <laughs> yes, it's, a do it's just a documentary that? about that song, about the creating creating that song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, main topic: Mount Weather. Is that a, a mountain where there's a lot of weather? It's a facility is uh, as a, the highest level of civilian and military official uh, national disaster planning and. It plays a major role in continuity of the U.S. government. Uh, Mountain Weather is also a control location for FEMA. Uh, fro. So it's like one of the most important facilities in America as far as like FEMA, the United States government, uh, all the controlled operations and everything else that goes on inside and outside America. So should be interesting. Oh, right. It's controlled by the Department of Homeland Security. The same people who have taken over Portland, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, how is that going? Um, there's a bunch of people suing uh, the feds, and the mayor just made a deal with the head of Department of Homeland Security as to when uh, they're going to leave. So, Are they going to leave, though? We don't know yet, the, but it, I don't even know what the deal they made was. That just happened, like, right before we even started podcasting, but there, a, really? apparently a deal has been made, yes. Hmm. I wonder what deal that can be. What do you think? Do you have any speculation? Um, my guess is within the week, possibly. Um, yeah, but what are they getting in return? That everybody in the world isn't looking at them and going, you're a bunch of assholes, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Hey, do you know, my favorite uh, horror author of all time is Stephen King. Oh, I, I got it. You... I got it for a new story that just came out two hours ago. So after we started recording, agents will be leaving the city's downtown area Thursday, Governor Kate Brown says, after talking with yeah, the head of DHS security Secretary Chad Wolf. So, tomorrow, okay. they're going to be out of downtown, is what they say. That doesn't mean they're not going to be in other places. <laughs> downtown. Da, 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 da. So, uh, my favorite uh, author in the entire world is Stephen King. I think you know that. Um, because I love his books. Okay. And I talk about uh, how he is amazing. Uh, and uh, guess what? He wants to make sure you... I'm talking directly to you now, Luke. Okay. I'm uh, watching, watching Netflix's best science fiction show. Okay? Let me read what, what Stephen King says. Okay? Dark on Netflix is dark and complex and very, very German. 
terrific show. If you get confused, <laughs> go to uh, Meta Witches and check Metacron's recaps. Detailed and helpful. You think the world is going to shit? Then you find other people that are watching Dark, and you can say, Thank God there is hope. Yeah. This is assuming that you trust Stephen King to say what is good and bad on TV, the guy who said he hated The Shining. So I'm (laughs) just putting that out there for everybody. (laughs) But I don't like The Shining, so I agree with Stephen King, and I know that it's controversial, and I don't fucking care. (laughs) Uh, You remember The Umbrella Man from? I do, yeah. This just com- coming out today. Police in Minneapolis say the man known as the Umbrella Man may have connections to white supremacy. Uh, oh. Police oh, claim that the man's a- actions were the ca- catalyst for the violence, uh, starting with the AutoZone store he was seen to damage. Um, he has not been named by local media and has not been formally charged with any crime. According to the Star Pro- Tribune, the man was identified following an email tip-off to... To the uh, to the cops, the email claimed he was a member of the Hell's Angels. An investigation found that the man is connected to a group called the Aryan Cowboys, a prison okay. biker street gang. Uh, the Anti Defamation League identifies them as a white supremacist group. Wow! So to, uh, tomorrow, probably next week, actually, probably tomorrow, we might find out the name of this guy and if he's actually connected with <laughs> white supremacy. This is what started all the violence. It's possible that right. all the violence was started by white supremacists. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Is that sad? I mean, we knew when we saw that under Umbrella Man video that something was up. Well, like it was very yeah. clear that that there was that was not just like a normal protester, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you see Anthony Padilla's YouTube video this week? By any chance? I don't remember seeing it, but it's possible I did. So, he he uh, spent a day talking to one of the biggest like YouTube stars, like PewDiePie, Mr. Beast, and so on and so on. About right. How... Yeah, this video. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, about uh, what the cost of fame being on YouTube is. Uh, very, very interesting YouTube video. Uh, 31 minutes long, but I really, really recommend it. It was incredibly inter- interesting. I mean, everything that I've seen, like everybody on YouTube right now is either Skate 3 or Skater XL because everybody thinks Skate 4 is going to come out soon because of that announcement yeah. so they all want to be ahead of the Skate 4 train so that on their YouTube channel they can be like, oh yeah, I was a Skate 3 YouTuber when Skate 4 mm-hmm. comes out. So everybody is trying to get ahead of the curve. It's kind of funny to watch. <laughs> uh, Mr. Beast adopted every dog in a dog shelter. That was one of the cutest videos I have seen this week. Yeah, it was very and good. Wanted- and I really, really wanted to do a dog after that. I'm such a dog person. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Anything else? I don't know. It's so hot. Let's wrap this up. I'm, I'm gonna die here. Uh, yeah. I have one more thing, and I blame you and only you for this because you sent me now, and I can officially say it down the box, Mac uh, rabbit hole. It's so funny. You sent. You sent me down the box back rabbit hole. I have never uh, given it a fair chance. I am sorry. You are 110% correct. It is one of the best YouTube channels out there. It, See? It's so funny because I sent that same video to my mom and she went down the same rabbit hole. <laughs> I think that episode I, was just an exceptionally good episode and it hooked people. I watched episode after episode after episode after episode. So thanks, Luke. You're welcome. Uh, well, from Norway, my name is Fro. From the United States, my name is Luke. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, citizen. Goodbye, citizen.